All right. Well, I think that we are going to go ahead and get started. We're about um, five minutes past. I will welcome everybody to our law and paralegal info session. Um, we've got some great stuff planned for you guys. Um, as you guys can see, this is being recorded. So we also can go ahead and send this out later on as an additional resource. Um, but we can go ahead and get started. Um, so to start, I am Natalie Deal. I'm that second one on this sheet. I'm an enrollment services advisor for our bachelor's and post-bachelor certificate in law and paralegal studies. Um, Katie, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, my name's Katie. I'm an enrollment services advisor for the associate and post associate certificate programs. Um, I'm one of four ESAs that work with those programs specifically. Um, but yeah, I'm here to help guide you through the application process and answer any questions you have along the way. I do want to also mention um, that if you have questions that you want answered during this presentation, please leave those in the Q&A section um, towards the bottom of your screen, and we will answer those um, in our Q&A portion towards the end of the presentation. Perfect. Awesome. Then Paige and Emma, you guys can introduce yourselves as well. Hi, everyone. My name is Paige Beatum. I am the one of your program directors. I'm the director for the associate degree as well as the post-associate and MNI co-direct the post-baccalaureate degree. Emma? Hi, everyone. I am Emma Fletcher. And um, as Professor Beatum said, I um, co-direct the certificate with her. And then I am the director for the bachelor's program as well. Perfect. And we both also teach in the program. Great. Um, well, then just to kind of touch on a little bit of what we are going to go over in this presentation. Um, first, we're going to have a little program video as an introduction that I'll play in just a second. Um, we'll also go through some of the program highlights um, that are true of all four of these programs. Um, we'll also go into which program's right for me, because as we said, we have four of them. <laughs> so which one's going to be best for you will be dependent on where you are in your educational journey right now. Um, so we'll go through that in a little bit as well. Um, and then the per, uh, program directors will go through a little bit of the curriculum of their programs. Katie and I will talk about the admission requirements and application process. Um, and then we'll get into the deadlines of applying for these programs um, to get to start in them. We'll go through the financial side of it with some tuition and financial aid information. Uh, and then we'll also get into some student resources as well as that Q&A section at the end that Katie was talking about. Cool. So this is that video. Just a little minute and a half. We'll get this started right now. The American legal system is truly in crisis right now. 86% of the people who need legal representation cannot afford it, and therefore they are representing themselves. Lawyers are expensive, and a lot of times the people who need them most can't afford them, and paralegals are such a vital piece of that access to justice to give affordable legal services. In UC's Law and Paralegal Studies program, our paralegal students help people through that process. I teach my students to make those connections. I want them to truly understand where the client's coming from. It's critical at that point in the client's lives. I've been an advocate of online learning since 2003 to understand what it means to actually be connected while not face-to-face. -face. I think I will have an upper hand. Coming from the UC online program, you learn so much about every area of the law. I see that in the students, that they want to give people opportunities to have access to justice. And so that's where my passion about it comes to a head. If you have a desire to make a difference, talk to your recruiter. You are going to make a difference in this person's life. So let's make sure that you do it well. So sorry. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say, I can take it from here. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you're good, Paige. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, I was trying to keep the introduction short, but let me just say, too, I'm so excited that you guys are all here. Um, you saw in that video that both your directors and all of your faculty members are so passionate about the legal system and making sure that the legal system serves the people that are in need of it. And one of the things that make our, many of the things that make our program unique or um, 
that's really is special is that we are approved by the American Bar Association. Now, if you are looking at figuring out what to do in the law or paralegal studies, this is one of the things that you want to make sure any program that you look at has. The American Bar Association is truly the gold standard of legal education, whether it's law school, whether it's undergraduate, they are the ones who go through and they have strict guidelines about how to make sure that you're learning what you need to know about um, how to practice within our legal profession. And so um, we've been approved by the American Bar Association since 1999. Um, we've maintained that status and only about a third of the programs in the United States have that status. So that's one thing that's super important and we're, we're very proud of it. And you'll hear us talk about it a lot in our classes because we know that's how we can assure that you're getting the best education that's out there. Other things that are important to all of our, I mentioned our faculty and how passionate we are about the legal profession, we're all licensed attorneys. We've all practiced with other attorneys as well as with other legal professionals such as paralegals. So these are people who are connected in their legal system. Um, you'll be taught by adjuncts as well as full-time professors. Adjuncts are people who are still practicing out in the legal field and have those connections for you. Our adjuncts um, come as far away from as California, um, certainly locally here in Cincinnati as well, but they have those connections across the United States that and that experience of actually practicing law. So that's something that's very important as well, just to provide you that background. We have the most amazing support team. Um, you get to meet many of them here today, uh, but you know, as things, as you start to look at, if you ask questions, what support is this school going to give me? You see as one of the most amazing support systems. From the very time that you start until graduation, and frankly, after graduation as well, you will be connected with people who um, will get you through the enrollment process, You'll have advisors, you'll have people to talk with about financial aid, and we'll talk a little bit about that today. But even if you graduate, um, you're still going to have these connections, and we encourage you to network with your faculty members um, as far as placements and um, continuing your, your career in the legal profession. So just really that's second to none, in my opinion. We also offer a lot of flexibility. We know that our students are here because, and they're online because they've got a lot to do in life. And we understand that. Uh, we do offer um, part-time availability. We offer, you can go part-time, you can go full-time. We have, depending on the program that you're in, between three and six start dates throughout the year. So we want to make sure that we come and meet you and that we're flexible enough that we can work with your schedule. So um, the entire program, both of all of our programs are completely online, but we do have synchronous courses, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit as well. I think that's what I got. <laughs> so there are four program options, which I know can sound a little bit overwhelming, but we really, as uh, Professor Beatum was talking about, we really want to meet students where they are. And we know that you all come in with different educational backgrounds, whether you're coming from high school or you're transferring from another program. Um, everyone's story is different. And so we really try and provide options for you to help you on your educational journey. So we have an associate in law and paralegal studies. And as Professor Beaton mentioned, these are all approved by the ABA. So um, it doesn't matter which one you're in, they all have that approval. The associate um, will is a great place to start if you don't have any other credits um, or you have a lower amount of credits or you're coming out of high school. Um, and so that's gonna be your first two years of the program. And so you'll start there. And then if you want to continue on to your bachelor's, um, you can do that. Or if you already have an associate's, uh, you can continue to get that four-year degree. So those work really seamlessly together. And um, we obviously all work together to make sure that that transition is really seamless for you. So um, those are sort of the two 
um, degree options. And then we have two different certificates as well. We have a post associate certificate and a post baccalaureate certificate. So if you're coming in and you already have an associate degree, you can earn the post associate certificate and it takes about a year to complete. So it's just additional study on top of the associate that you already have. And that associate's degree can be in anything. Um, it does not have to be a legal related program. And um, same with the post baccalaureate certificate. If you have a bachelor's degree in anything from, you know, criminal justice to math and accounting, anything that you have, um, if you already have a bachelor's degree, you can add on the certificate. And both of these will prepare you to work in the legal field without having to go back and do all of those, you know, gen eds and other things that come with a typical degree track. So we really um, have so many options that no matter where you are, there's something that could be a great fit for you. If you have really specific you know, transfer credits or things, we encourage you to work with um, your UCO recruiter and advisor uh, because they can really help you kind of get into the weeds a little bit there. Um, but just know that we have done our best to provide as many options as possible to help you through this journey. So you may be thinking, okay, so what does this journey, what is it going to look like? So I'll take you through the associate degree and talk to you about that. So just to recap, an associate degree is if you are just starting college from wherever, um, whether that's straight from high school or whether you're a non-traditional student, you took some time to do some other things in life and have some experiences. An associate degree is really that first two years uh, of your studies. Now, you may be coming into the associate degree if you've got, just as Emma was saying, just one year, you'll still be finishing that associate degree. So this is what it looks like. If you look on the right-hand side of your screen, those are all your general education credits. Those are really important. Working in the legal field, you're going to be dealing with all kinds of people, but it's always about a specific issue. So you need to be able to have effective speaking skills. You need to be able to write. You need to be able to do a little bit of math. We all laugh at that, about that because lawyers are notoriously bad at math. So if that's what you're thinking, you are in the right place. But um, you know the law affects everything. So those foundational courses are important. And if you look at the left-hand side of your screen, these are the foundational legal courses that everyone in the legal profession really needs to be proficient in. And so we take you through an introductory course. We teach you about legal research and writing, um, family law, civil litigation, real estate, corporate law, uh, estates and planning, and then administrative law, which is things like social security, disability, immigration, uh, workers' compensation. So these are really those foundational courses that will give you that solid base. If you complete either your post-associate certificate or your associate degree, we are always going to say, think about continuing on to your bachelor degree. Um, it only helps you in the long run. Our associate degrees certainly are very marketable and will get you out into uh, the field, but we'll always encourage you to hone those skills that we teach you at the, in the first two years into your bachelor degree. So as Professor Beatum explained, those first two years are crucial to understanding the foundations of the legal system. Um, you are learning the basics, their contracts, torts, all of those things that can help as you build on that legal knowledge. And so once you get into the bachelor side of things, we're really going to hone those skills and dig in a little bit deeper. And so this here we have. Um, just as she was speaking about, we have the gen eds. Those are required whether you're getting the associate or the bachelor. Um, but as far as our legal specific courses, these are upper level courses with a little bit more advanced topics. Um, we have you know, an advanced legal research option after you've taken legal research and kind of gotten the foundation skills for that, a seminar. Um, and some of these, like children in the law, they go into a variety of topics. So we touch on immigration, international law, family law, um, contracts. 
And so having those foundational courses is imperative there because if you don't understand those, you won't be able to build on that knowledge. So um, this is just kind of an overview of the bachelor side of things, but all of these have been designed to work together and um, really make it a building block sort of setup um, as opposed to being totally separate. All right, so we already kind of touched on admission requirements for each of the programs, but I'm going to touch on them again. Um, so for all of these programs, there is currently a 2.5 cumulative GPA requirement. For first year students, that just means that you've never attended a college or university in the past. It is recommended that you start in the associate program. And this program is open admissions with a high school diploma, a GED, or homeschool equivalent. For a transfer student that has not completed a degree, it is recommended that you start in the associate program. If you have around less than, we like to say, like 40 to 60 credits earned, um, and then if you have earned more than about 40 to 60 credits, it is recommended that you start in the bachelor's program. Um, but if you have graduated with an associate's degree, again, in any field from a regionally accredited university, then you um, and you have met the uh, GPA requirement, then you are eligible to apply for either the post associate certificate or the bachelor's program. Um, and then if you've graduated with your bachelor's degree, again, in any field, regionally accredited university, and meet that GPA requirement, um, then you're eligible to apply for the post-bachelor certificate. Um, but if you have any questions about which program would be the best for you, um, like to start in, then you can reach out to me, Natalie, or your designated enrollment services advisor, um, and we'll help you out. Yep, perfect. Thanks, Katie. Um, and then for the admissions process, um, for the associates and the bachelor's and the post-associate certificate, it's all the same where you'll just fill out our normal UC online application that just takes about 15 minutes, mostly just some demographic information, what program you want to be in, when you'd like to start. Um, and then you would just need to get official transcripts from anywhere that you've previously attended sent over to our admissions office. Um, and we have those um, physical address and email address here. Um, if you have taken at least 24 previous college credit hours, we don't need your high school transcript. Um, but if you have earned less than 24 college credit hours, we will need that high school one as well. Um, and just to touch on what an official transcript means, um, that essentially means that it has not passed through the hands of a student. Um, so that means that your previous institution has sent it directly to our admissions office, um, essentially unopened, hasn't touched anybody else's hands. That's what makes it official. Um, for the post-bachelor certificate, that process is a little bit different. Um, and just to not confuse people here, I would definitely just recommend reaching out to me or your, your um, enrollment services advisor to go through that process a little bit more. Um, it is very similar, though, where you just fill out a form and have your transcript sent in. It's just a different form and you have them sent somewhere else. So just to not put too much information, definitely reach out to us if you have questions about that. Um, and then as for transfer credits, um, for the gen eds and electives, we are very, very open um, to transfer credits. For paralegal specific, they would have to be other ABA accredited courses um, to be eligible for transfer. Um, and you'll get a lot more information on the transfer process once you do get all of your transcripts sent in to us and we get along with that process a little bit more. Um, but as it says here, that is all based on school accreditation. Um, the course content comparability, as well as the year taken and the final grade that you received. Um, so like I said, with the transfer process, you get a lot more information once we have all of your transcripts and we're a little bit farther along in that process. Perfect. So here is a snapshot of the associate level academic calendar for fall of 2023 and spring 24. For the associate and post-associate certificate, these programs have classes beginning every seven weeks, and this is an overview of those application deadlines and when those classes start. So for the first session for fall, the deadline is July 1st for classes starting August 21st, 
And for the second session for fall, the deadline is August 7th for classes starting October 10th. Um, I also wanted to mention that the application deadline includes your application and all official transcripts are sent in by then. Um, and then applications are currently open for fall 2023 and spring 2024. Um, and then summer 2024 application will have a similar structure when it is open. Perfect. And it's very similar for our um, bachelor's and post-bachelor certificate program. Um, we just have start dates every seven, every 14 weeks instead of every seven weeks. Um, the classes in this program are still seven weeks long. You just can't start a semester halfway through, if that makes sense. Um, so the classes are the same length as the associate and post-associate certificate. Um, we just have fewer start dates. Um, so for the bachelor's and post-bachelor certificate, um, our fall deadline is going to be July 1st, which is a month from today. Um, and then those classes would start August 21st. Um, and then for our spring 2024 semester, that application deadline will be due November 4th. And then those classes would start January 8th. Awesome. So here is the current snapshot for the tuition information for the associate level programs. For a part-time student, the Ohio resident tuition is $288 per credit hour, and the non-Ohio resident tuition is $303 per credit hour. You are considered a part-time student if you're taking one to three classes per semester, and you are considered a full-time student if you're taking four classes per semester. Um, so for a full-time student, the Ohio resident tuition is $3,439 per semester, and the non-Ohio resident tuition is $3,619 per semester. Um, but please note that these um, are the current tuition numbers. They are subject to change, um, but for the most up-to-date tuition information, please check our website. Perfect. Um, and then for the bachelor's program, um, it's very similar for part-time. That's going to be um, less than 12 credit hours, and then full-time is going to be 12 or more. Um, for an Ohio resident, it is 549 a credit hour, um, and for a non-Ohio resident, it's 564. Um, and then for the full-time rate for an Ohio resident, it's 6,588. Um, and for a non-resident, it's 6,768. Uh, and like Katie mentioned, um, there is going to be a little bit of variability here. Uh, variability here just with um, upcoming semesters, um, but there is a guarantee that the rate that you start your classes at, that's what it will be for the entire time that you are with us. Once you start your courses, that rate won't change again, um, but it is possible that it would change before the fall or before the spring courses start. Awesome. And then going into financial aid a little bit more, um, we do have an active military and veteran scholarship um, through the college that these programs are in. Um, so for active military applying specifically to the bachelor's in law and paralegal studies program, um, you could be eligible for up to a $2,500 per, per semester um, scholarship for full-time students or $1,500 for um, part-time students. And that is something that gets stacked with other benefits once you do um, confirm your spot in the program and get enrolled in courses. Um, so that is something that can get added on in the back end for that scholarship. Um, we also are eligible to use any VA benefits. Um, we definitely would recommend reaching out to your VA rep to see what that would look like specifically for you, um, just because they'll have a lot more information on your specific benefits. Um, and then we also are FAFSA eligible. Um, so we definitely would recommend filling out the financial aid form um, before each school year. It's free. Um, definitely super helpful with getting any government assistance for your education. Um, and then also with UC Claremont, which is the college that the associate program and the post associate certificate are in, they have a bunch of donor based scholarships. Um, so that is just one application that students can fill out that makes them eligible for a ton of different scholarships. Um, so that is something that can be handled a little bit farther down the line again once you um, finish that application and get through that process. Um, we also have an initiative called U to B, which means university to business. Um, and that is where we do partner with different companies and organizations to set up tuition scholarships um, as kind of an agreement with employers. Um, so if you think that your employer would be interested in that, definitely reach out to us. We can get all of those contacts to the right people. Um, and then we also have something called Cengage Unlimited. That is where a lot of our textbooks are through. 
um, where the program directors have set up an awesome relationship with them, um, where you can get a bunch of discounts and um, free textbooks when you get a little bit farther along in that process as well. Uh, and then we do also have tuition payments that are available, uh, payment plans, and that is for a flat rate that you can split your tuition payments up into a couple of different payments um, for a flat rate, like I had mentioned. Perfect. So here at the University of Cincinnati, you are always supported here in our programs. And here are just a few ways that we support you as a student. Um, so like we mentioned before, me and Natalie are enrollment services advisors, and we're here to help um, connect you to the right program that's best for you and to guide you through that application process. Um, but after you're, you've confirmed your spot in your program, you will then be matched with the student success coordinator, and they will be your point of contact all the way until you graduate. Um, so they will also help with things like making sure that you have um, helpful helpful or useful student resources, um, help you navigate online learning, um, and help connect you with your professors and your academic advisor. Um, and then your academic advisor will be your point of contact to help you enroll in classes. Um, but they will not only help you plan your first semester in the program, but they'll also help plan your entire time in your program and create a graduation plan with you. Um, they will also help you clarify your academic, professional, um, and personal goals, explain program and university policies, advise on classes and how they fit into your goals, counsel you on any academic and personal matters, and make sure that you stay on track to graduate. Awesome. And then just a couple other student resources. Um, we do have something called the Bearcat Promise Career Studio, um, and that is where you can essentially get help with like resume writing, coming up with maybe what you are aiming to do, kind of that career counseling aspect. Um, and so that is open to all UC students, whether they are on campus or online. We also have something called the Learning Commons, um, which is essentially almost like a tutoring center um, where you can get academic help on any of your courses, also open to anybody in person or online. Um, and then we all have some, also have something called CAPS, which is our counseling and psychological services. Um, which is also eligible um, for any on-campus or online students. Um, so that is also something you are more than welcome to take advantage of. And before we go into our Q&A session, um, here are some frequently asked questions that we get asked about these programs. Um, so the first one is, how are classes formatted? So most of our classes are online and asynchronous in a seven-week format. Um, you will have weekly assignments with due dates, but you can log on anytime 24-7 to complete your coursework. Um, students must take at least nine semester hours or six classes through synchronous instruction. Um, and for these courses, students get to attend virtual lectures at a specified weekly time. Um, and these classes are typically offered in the evenings via Zoom. Um, and students have mentioned um, in the past that synchronous classes were a big benefit to this program because you get to have face-to-face -face time with your professors and other students in the program. And another question that we get is, um, is this school and my program accredited? And the answer is yes. Um, so the University of Cincinnati's online law and paralegal studies programs are one of the few programs that are approved by the American Bar Association, like we mentioned earlier. Um, and the University of Cincinnati is regionally accredited, which is the highest level of accreditation possible. And then the last frequently asked question that we get is, how much time do I need to spend studying each week? Um, and that will vary based on the course, the number of courses you're taking per semester, and your individual pace. Um, but on average, we recommend that students um, are spending three to five hours studying each week for every credit hour they take. So for a three credit hour class, um, a student should plan to spend around 9 to 15 hours studying in additional course time. Um, and that'll take us to the Q&A portion. Um, if you're just joining us, 
Um, if you have a question, please drop it in the Q&A part at the bottom of your screen. Um, so that way we can answer it. Um, so here's a question we can start with. Um, in addition to the military and veteran scholarships, does UC accept MYCAA grants for military spouses? I'm not too familiar with that. Natalie, do you have? Yeah, I am not specific. I'm not familiar with that specific grant. Um, but in general, if it is money coming from outside, we do generally accept most grants. Um, as long as it's the military scholarship that I was mentioning is currently not available to spouses. It's only available to the active military or veteran personnel themselves. Um, but generally, if it's money coming from outside through a grant, we do generally accept it, but I'm not familiar with that specific grant. We also, um, so if, so when you connect with your enrollment services advisor, um, they will give you um, an email if you mention that you're in the military with points of contact. Um, and those, those people, um, work specifically with military, family, students, um, all that fun stuff. Um, so they are there to answer any of those questions. Um, so when talking with your enrollment services advisor, please ask them um, for that information and they can get that for you. Perfect. Another question is, which price is the post-batch, please? the 3,400 or the 6,500? Yeah, so the post-bachelor certificate is the bachelor's level pricing. Um, so it would be that, I think it's 6,700 one for full-time, um, but for non-Ohio residents, it currently is 564 a, a credit hour for the post-bachelor certificate. Perfect, and then the same person asked, What's the fast? What's the fastest the post batch can be completed? Yeah, absolutely. So the post bachelor certificate is eight courses. Um, so you could take, say, two classes um, every seven weeks, which would be definitely a full time load. It would probably need to be the main focus that you would have for those semesters. If you're working full time, we definitely would not recommend taking those that amount of courses. Um, but you could finish it in two semesters if you did take two classes every seven weeks for those four sections of seven weeks. Um, but like I said, we definitely would only recommend that if that is going to be your main focus for that time. We normally recommend one course every seven weeks if you are working full time, just because that is a much more manageable course load. If I can follow up on that too, um, you know, when we, we recommend how you take courses, I think some people say, oh, there's seven week courses. I can take four courses at a time. That is not the case whatsoever. It is a 14 week full semester course accelerated into a seven week course. So that's why we really have you take only two courses every seven weeks. It's really advantageous and all the research will, will support this that if you're learning online, or I think anyway, in any medium, being able to focus just on those particular topics is really helpful um, and will provide you for the most success. But please don't think that you can go, oh, I wanna do this as fast as possible. I've gone full-time school before. It's very different. These seven week courses are definitely accelerated, really no more than two at a time is recommended. Perfect. And that same student asked another question. Can the certificate classes be exchanged for another ABA approved class? For example, swap family law for medical tort. Um, and then she explains that she's a nurse practitioner um, and would like greater focuses on healthcare and disability law. I'll take it if you want, Emma. Um, it would really be something that we need to sit down and talk about. Um, if it were to happen, we do take transfer credits, um, but it would have to be from another ABA approved school. And because of the way that we have our classes set up, um, and actually I can kind of grab um, a little bit of this question, the next question coming up, not every class is offered every semester. And so it's really important that you stay on the track that your advisor gives you. Bringing in other classes can be um, complicated, 
but it's one of those things that sit down with either Professor Fletcher and I and your advisor as a team and say, this is how this could work. Um, it's possible that it could be as a transfer credit, but we are limited with that postback because of the limited number of classes that we have. Perfect. Um, and that answered that next question. Um, another question is, how long can a degree normally get completed with the bachelor program? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, so that would just depend on how many credits you are bringing in. Um, if you're starting in the bachelor's program, you definitely should have a decent amount of credits coming in. Um, but it would depend on exactly how many of those transfer credits that you have, as well as how many courses you would decide to take each semester, um, which, like we've said, pretty much the only options are one or two every seven weeks. Um, and you don't have to commit to one schedule of that from the beginning. Like you could do one the first seven weeks and two the second. You definitely have full freedom to kind of switch up how you're doing that schedule based on what else is going on in your life. Um, but the exact length of the program is going to vary greatly depending on how many courses you decide to take each semester and what you are coming into the program with. Um, for a little bit more of a specific answer, I would definitely recommend asking your specific enrollment services advisor. They might be able to give you a little bit more direction, um, but we probably wouldn't be able to give you a super specific answer on how long it would take until you're a little farther along in the process and all of your transcripts have been processed. Um, but in general, that is kind of up to you how long it will take based on how many courses you decide to take at a time. I do want to mention, too, that we offer a full schedule in the summer as well, which some programs you know, have a, a lo lesser schedule in the summer or, um, and not that you have to take classes during the summer, you can follow sort of a more traditional academic schedule, but uh, that does help people kind of work through the courses a little bit faster than um, following a more traditional schedule. Perfect. Um, the next question is, please expound on the required hours. Are the minimum required hours centered around financial aid? So it, it, if I understand your question correctly, and, and it'll be a two-part answer then, um, from our point of view, you could take one course every semester, and that's fine with us. Um, not a problem as far as going through the curriculum. You could do that. I think when they were talking about um, money, then you start looking at, are you part-time or full-time? Um, financial aid has different requirements in terms of how many classes that you have to take. But just as far as completing the program, you certainly could take one course per semester as far as the curriculum go, goes. So I'll leave the rest of financial aid and information to someone else. Yeah, absolutely. For financial aid specifically, you have to be in at least six credit hours every semester to be eligible for financial aid. Um, so that means two classes every semester, which when we're talking about semester, that is the full 14 weeks. So that would be one each seven weeks to be financial aid eligible. Um, but that is the only real minimum requirement is to be fin financial aid eligible. You do have to take at least six credit hours every semester. Awesome. Another question is, what is the max amount of credit hours that can be taken per semester? My previous school, I was maxed out at 18 credit hours. Do, do you want me to take this one? <laughs> um, I, I think we've kind of touched on sort of the best way to succeed in the program that um, even taking 18 hours would be a lot in this program just because the courses are accelerated. I believe the university does cap you at 18 though. Yes, the university as a whole does cap you at 18, um, but like we have mentioned, like Emma just said, um, generally people who are taking that many aren't necessarily successful in all of their courses since it is a sped up course. Perfect. Um, there's another student just saying they had a question similar to um, a previous one. Um, and then the last question that's on the Q&A session that has not been answered yet um, is asking about um, what tuition would look like for four classes in a semester. 
Um, and I can take that one because it's about the associate's degree. Um, so for four classes, that's going to be um, that full time um, tuition rate that was on the chart. Um, so that full time chart that you saw, the, the one on the left, that was for four classes um, per semester. Um, so that's what your tuition would be if you're taking four credit or four classes, um, and that that would be equivalent of twelve um, credit hours. Perfect. Katie, I just want to really quickly um, the last uh, question that said it was similar. Um, I think that they mentioned that they were interested in becoming an attorney, possibly. Um, I'm, I'm, oh yes, okay. I'm trying to join the non-traditional route of being an attorney. So um, with that, I just wanna say that this is a really great stepping stone to law school if you decide to go on. And um, both Professor Beatum and I are happy to help you on that path as well as any of your instructors because as we stated, they're licensed attorneys. Um, with that, UC also has a great pre-professional advising center that is really helpful in, um, you know, helping prepare for the LSAT and writing recommendation letters and all of those kind of things. And so um, I know a lot of times people have that question, can I go into law school with this degree? And we always say, absolutely. This is an fantastic degree where you get really practical experience um, to be able to go on to law school. So I just wanted to touch on that, whether that was really her question or not, but I think that's a good thing to share with students. Perfect. Um, so we have more questions coming in. Um, one student is asking if they graduated um, with another school and came here, how long it would take for them to get their bachelor's degree, mentioning they currently have 63 credits now. Um, I, I would say um, connect with your um, enrollment services advisor um, and get those transfer um, or get those transcripts requested to the University of Cincinnati admissions office. Um, to be able to get your, um, I'm blanking on with transcript evaluation, um, and that's going to be the key of how many classes you have left in your program. Um, if anyone else wants to add anything to that. Yeah, other than that, it's just going to be the super similar answer of it's just going to depend on how many courses you decide to take each semester, because um, that does fully decide the length of how long you'll be in the program. I would add just a little bit to that as well. It depends on what those 63 credit hours are in. If you've been focused on health information systems and you want a degree in law and paralegal studies, it's going to take longer. Um, if that, in that scenario, if that were to happen, you may decide I want to finish my health information degree and get my bachelor's in that. The post baccalaureate certificate you can then earn that and take all of your legal classes and get that post-baccalaureate certificate. So that is an option as well for people who have, who are close to the end of their bachelor degree, but still want this legal degree. Um, there is, you can take the post-bac classes simultaneously as you're taking your bachelor classes as well. Awesome. Another question is, um, how can I schedule to speak um, with our directors? Um, and the answer to that is after the Q&A session here in our last five minutes, we're going to have uh, mine and Natalie's um, as well as Emma's and Paige's um, contact information on the screen. Um, so you're always welcome to um, reach out to them that way. Um, and they, they would love to answer your questions. Perfect. So our next. Oh. Here for yourself. Uh, just reach out to us and we can set up, you know, a Zoom meeting or a phone call, whatever is best for you, or we can communicate via email. So we're here for whatever you need. Awesome. So another question is, will online learners have total access to all of the school's extracurricular activities and functions? Um, so like a fraternity 
or short or something like that. So in general, our online students, oh, sorry, 100% my bad. Our online students do have full University of Cincinnati status. When you graduate with us, the degree doesn't even say online on it. It just says University of Cincinnati. Um, so as for those specific like sorority or fraternities, that might be up to their bylaws with how all of that works. But in general, you do have full University of Cincinnati student um, capacity. Another question that we have um, mentions this student is currently a paralegal of 4.5 years um, with an associate's degree and a certificate, um, and they want to know if workforce experience counts toward any elective credit hours. I'll take it. <laughs> you guys can see Emma and I are like, who's taking this one? Um, no, is the answer. And, and, you know, there are times that I wish I could, but um, we, we cannot, and ABA approved schools cannot do that. Perfect. The next question is, um, would you say for a full-time working mom of three, it would be best to take two courses per semester? I definitely would say so. That would be one every seven weeks. Just have one class to focus on on a time. I definitely think that would be a smart decision. Yeah, I, I think, you know, in order to be successful, you really want to limit your time as much. And um, with three kids, you know, on a full-time job, that's probably going to be the max that you could do. Um, just speaking personally, both Professor Ambedum and I are actually in school as well. I'm working on my MBA. I work full-time at UC and I have four kids and I could not do more than two a semester. So um, that's just me personally speaking, but I, I and you can always add more, um, but I would start slow so that you can set yourself up for success. I can only handle one a semester, so, <laughs> so we're in this boat with you guys. Um, we look, we just like education, um, but uh, I do one a semester, and that's all I can handle on top of life. Yeah, I also recommend students that you know are working in families at least your first semester take one to two um, classes starting out, and that way you can kind of gauge. Um, what that kind of looks like for you going forward in the program. Awesome. So the next question, um, and we only have a few minutes left, um, but this next question kind of answers another one um, a little further down in the Q&A. But do we come to campus at all during the program? Um, and I can take this one. The answer is um, the only thing that you um, may have to come to campus for, and that's not really have to, it's if you want to, um, is your optional attendance graduation. Um, so if you would like to walk on stage to receive your diploma, you can absolutely come to campus and do that. Um, but it's not required. And if you don't come, then the um, your diploma will be mailed to you. And we have students all over the United States and all over the world, um, and they all kind of do different things, so totally up to you, but no pressure to ever come to campus if you don't want to. But you're also a member of the university, so you're welcome. As the previous question said, you know, you're a Bearcat, and so you can come do anything you want on campus if that's something you want to do. We know a lot of you are in Cincinnati as well, so. Perfect. So this student says they have two associate degrees, one in legal. Um, they received it many years ago. Um, and recently, the college that she went to lost their accreditation. Will we still accept the transcripts from this school? And that'll be our last question. That's a pretty specific one. Um, so you would have to talk to your admissions counselor as well as your advisor, and they'll do a an audit of your transfer credits to see what can and cannot transfer. Um, I know in as far as legal credits, 
um, any legal studies credits. If it's older than seven years, we cannot accept it. Um, it so it, there is a time limit on that. So you said it's a while ago. I don't know how long, but it's pretty specific. The good news is, is that we absolutely have the resources to go through. And we, your advisor will put together what looks like a, it's called a graduation plan. So that you can see your entire path. So if you say, okay, what's going to be accepted? What's not going to be accepted? What does the next couple of years of my life look like? We plan that out for you as you're making that decision. So you will absolutely have support to figure out those answers, but that's going to be a pretty specific one that we have to look at. Awesome. Well, that's all the questions. I'm glad we were able to get through all of them. Um, but looking at the next slide, um, these are our socials for Facebook, Instagram, um, LinkedIn. Feel, please feel free to go um, on there and connect with us. Um, and in the next slide, that is mine and Natalie's contact information. Um, again, we are just enrollment services advisors that are on a team of other enrollment services advisors. Um, so if you do put in an inquiry or if someone reaches out to you and says they're from the University of Cincinnati and they're not us, um, that's perfectly fine. Um, they just work on the team with us. Um, but if you have any specific questions and you want to reach out to us, please free, feel free to um, at any of those methods. Yeah, and then for the QR code up in that corner for the application, um, that is the application portal for the associate program, the bachelor program, as well as the post-associate certificate. Like we mentioned, the post-bachelor certificate does have a slightly different process, um, so feel free to reach out to your advisor for that specific link. And then here is Paige's and Emma's contact information. Um, I know one of the students wanted that. Um, so feel free, you can email them or um, call and I believe text. Are y'all okay with texting? I am. I was going to say that those are our cell phone numbers. So you're welcome to text as well. Awesome. So definitely reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Um, and I hope everyone has a good rest of their day.